I don't see a risk of a deep economic and financial crisis in the next two years in the global economy. Of course, we live in a world in which uh, global growth is mediocre. Uh, the IMF calls it the new mediocre, I call it the new abnormal. Potential growth both in advanced economies and emerging markets has fallen. And actual growth is also weak because there is a painful process of deleveraging from high levels of private and public debt. Global economic growth is going to be mediocre in the next couple of years. Probably the baseline would not be one of an economic and financial crisis. But of course, there is a tail risk with a lower probability that such a crisis may occur. There are a number of uh, global tail risks that could lead to stresses in the global economy and financial market. The first one is China. If the rebalancing to a more sustainable growth model doesn't occur fast enough, uh, rather than a bumpy landing, you could have a hard landing. The second one is uh, US economic growth that has been uh, so far mediocre, and some people worry about the stall in US economic growth. Uh, there is the difficult and complex issue for the Fed of exiting zero policy rates and not causing on one side uh, a recession if you exit too fast and not causing maybe inflation uh, if you are essentially moving too slowly. The top priorities of policymaker in the G3 should be to find ways of sustaining stronger actual and potential growth. In the last few years there has been too much reliance on unconventional monetary policies, things like zero policy rates, quantitative easing, credit easing, forward guidance, effects intervention, now even negative policy rates. I think that the baton should be passed from monetary policy to fiscal policy as of boosting short-term economic growth, as fiscal policy has some space and monetary policy is running out of effectiveness, sometimes it's counterproductive. And then there should be also greater emphasis on the kind of structural reforms in US, in Europe, in Japan. They're gonna increase potential growth because potential growth has fallen in the G3 countries, both because of demographic factors, because of deleveraging, and because there has been too little capital spending by the corporate sector. And only structural reform are gonna increase productivity growth and potential growth over time.